On October 7, 2007, 32-year-old Felicia Maguire's disappearance left her family and friends devastated. She was last seen in the Dorchester area of Boston, and despite extensive investigations and searches, she was never found. The circumstances of her disappearance were shrouded in mystery, and police received reports of suspicious activity by a person of interest. The case eventually went cold, leaving Maguire's loved ones with no closure. Was Felicia targeted by someone she knew? Was she the victim of a random act of violence? Welcome back to Cold Case Files, where we unravel the secrets of the unknown. Today, we delve into the mysterious disappearance of Felicia Maguire and explore a mystery that was unsolved for 15 long years until justice was finally served in 2023. But first, if you are new to the channel or haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider clicking the subscribe button as it helps us and motivates us to create more content for you. So, without further ado, let's dive right into this mystery. Dorchester is a neighborhood located in the southern part of Boston, Massachusetts. It is the largest neighborhood in Boston, covering a land area of approximately six square miles. Dorchester has a diverse population of over 90,000 people with a mix of ethnicities, including Irish American, African American, Caribbean American, and Vietnamese American. Dorchester has undergone significant development in recent years, with new housing and commercial projects, making it an up-and-coming area in Boston. It is in this neighborhood that our story takes us today. Felicia Maguire was born into the picturesque world of Dorchester in 1975. Though her father's name is not known, she was raised by her mother Sharon Maguire and grew up in a happy home full of laughter and love. In 1997, she gave birth to a baby boy and named him Nicholas Fahey, and from then on, he became the center of her world. However, the details of who Nicholas's father was and what happened to him are shrouded in mystery. Despite the hardships and challenges that life threw at her, Felicia continued to live in Dorchester with her beloved son and her mother, creating a home filled with warmth and love. She was also in a live-in relationship with a man named David Pena. Despite facing the challenges of being a single parent, she remained devoted to her child's well-being. With unwavering determination, she worked tirelessly to ensure that her child had the best life possible. Her love and dedication knew no bounds, and she went above and beyond to provide for her child, giving him all the care and support he needed. She was a shining example of a selfless and loving mother who put her child's needs above her own and never let the difficulties of life dampen her spirit. It was a cool autumn day on October 7, 2007, when Felicia MacGyver vanished into thin air. The 32-year-old mother was last seen in the neighborhood she called home, which was Dorchester in Boston, Massachusetts. She had been spotted on Rixton Street, going about her business, but no one knows what happened to her after that. Her mother Sharon's heart ached with the absence of her daughter, and the uncertainty of what happened to Felicia made it even worse. She went through every phone book and every possible contact that she could think of, but it was all in vain. She felt as though she was drowning in a sea of loneliness, and there was no rescue in sight. As days went by, her friends and family grew more and more worried when Felicia failed to contact them. With numerous questions revolving in Felicia's mother's head, and after all her efforts, she eventually reported Felicia missing after 10 days on October 18, 2007. As soon as the report was filed, the Boston Police Department launched an investigation into her disappearance. They discovered that Felicia's behavior was unusual and she had stopped communicating with her young son and other relatives, a troubling sign that something sinister might have happened to her. Her family was deeply worried about her safety and well-being, as it was not in her nature to disappear without a trace. Where had she gone? What had happened to her? These were questions that remained unanswered, leaving her son and family to grapple with the uncertainty of her fate. 
As the investigation into Felicia Maguire's disappearance began, law enforcement officials worked tirelessly to uncover any evidence that might help them solve the case. Detectives interviewed family members, friends, and neighbors, hoping to piece together a timeline of Felicia's last known movements. They also conducted extensive searches of the surrounding area, including nearby woods and bodies of water, looking for any sign of the missing woman. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Felicia's family grew increasingly concerned. Where had their beloved daughter and mother disappeared to? The Boston Police Department, too, was troubled by the lack of information surrounding her disappearance. In November of 2013, they took to social media to post photos of the missing woman, hoping for any information that might lead to her safe return. In the post, they described her in detail, her height, weight, hair, and eye color, and expressed their deep concern for her safety and well-being. She was a beautiful woman, with chestnut-brown hair and piercing green eyes that sparkled with life. She stood at a modest height of 5 feet 2 inches and had a medium build, weighing around 140 pounds. The search for Felicia had been ongoing for over six long years, and with each passing day, the mystery of her disappearance deepened. Despite dedicating an immense amount of resources and time to search for clues, her body had never been found. However, this time in 2013, after the Facebook post, multiple witnesses' accounts surrounding Felicia's disappearance continued to raise suspicion. According to reports, the first unnamed witness, who lived below Felicia and Pena's apartment at that time, recalls Pena, her live-in boyfriend, showing up at his door in the early morning hours of October 7, 2007, wanting a ride to his mother's house in Devon Street. He was covered in blood and claimed that Maguire had stabbed him with scissors. But the amount of blood on Pena's shirt suggested something far more sinister had taken place. The witness said that Pena told him that he had shoved Felicia with force against the wall, causing her to hit her head on the bed or dresser. Pena, seemingly indifferent to her fate, stated that he did not know if she was still alive. But the witness's observations did not end there. They also noticed that Pena's right hand was swollen. When asked about it, Pena claimed that Felicia had struck him with a baseball bat. Days later, two other witnesses claimed to have seen Pena come back to the apartment that same night. Pena came back with another man at about 3 or 4 a.m. that night and went upstairs. After some time, they came back down carrying a rolled-up blanket down the stairs, possibly containing Maguire's body. Despite offering to help, the two witnesses were turned away and instructed to mind their own business. Adding to the mystery, another witness reported loaning Pena his brown 2005 Chevy Impala car in exchange for drugs and receiving it back with a broken and cleaned back seat which could have provided access to the trunk. As the investigation continued, these unsettling details were raising questions about what really happened to Felicia Maguire and were drawing the police's suspicions towards David Pena. Investigators wasted no time and interrogated David Pena about the case. They also learned that he had a history of violence towards Felicia. Love can be complicated and messy, and this certainly seemed to be the case for Felicia and Pena. As Pena revealed to investigators, he was Felicia Maguire's live-in boyfriend at the time of her disappearance, and their relationship was far from smooth sailing. In fact, Pena had previously admitted to being involved in a violent altercation with Felicia at their apartment to the first witness who had spoken to the police. When investigators interrogated him about this, he confessed that Felicia lashed out at him with a pair of scissors, stabbing him in the shoulder. In response, Pena fled the apartment and sought refuge at his mother's house. But when he returned several days later, he was met with a startling discovery. Felicia was nowhere to be found, and her possessions had been removed. With no further evidence against him, and Pena saying nothing incriminating, police were forced to let him go. After this, the investigation into the murder of Felicia was a grueling journey, filled with twists and turns that led to one dead end after another. 
Every possible lead was chased down, every scrap of evidence examined, but the case grew colder with each passing day. The pain of Felicia's loved ones was palpable as they yearned for answers. Rumors and speculation circulated for years about the whereabouts of Felicia McGuire, the beloved mother who vanished without a trace in 2007. But in 2017, new hope was sparked as the FBI led a search in a dense wooded area in West Roxbury. The investigation, which lasted for days, was shrouded in secrecy and details were not released to the press, leaving the public wondering what had led authorities to that location. Finally, the truth emerged. The search was indeed connected to Felicia's disappearance, and it was a crucial step in the long and arduous journey to uncover the truth. The search led the investigators to a witness who provided them with the shocking revelation that Pena had asked him to help remove items from the apartment, including a rolled-up carpet that was difficult to carry. He further stated that Pena and his accomplices had put Felicia's body in the back of a car and driven away at high speed. The witness who observed this claimed that he immediately suspected there was a body wrapped up in the carpet and blanket. Sadly, his suspicions were correct. The witness eventually helped Pena carry Felicia's body into a wooded area with a parking lot, where they abandoned her body. The puzzle was almost complete, except for one crucial piece, the location of Felicia McGuire's remains. Despite multiple leads and witnesses, it seemed that the answer to this question would forever remain a mystery. The witness left the scene before discovering the fate of her remains. To make matters worse, this witness was not familiar with Boston and couldn't provide any clues as to where the body might have been dumped. The prosecutor was left with a frustratingly incomplete picture of the crime, unable to bring closure to McGuire's family and loved ones. The Boston Police Department's fugitive unit successfully apprehended David Pena on January 14, 2023, at the Baker County Detention Center in Florida. Pena, aged 33, had an outstanding warrant from Dorchester District Court for a murder charge related to Felicia's case. Pena was also wanted for trafficking cocaine as per an outstanding warrant sought out of Suffolk Superior Court. It has been over 15 years since Felicia vanished from Roxton Street in Dorchester, leaving behind her young son. Pena's arrest may provide some long-awaited answers to her family and friends who have been searching for her all this time. Pena appeared in court for his arraignment on February 15th for the charges brought against him. The case has garnered national attention, and this latest development has rekindled hopes of finding Felicia's remains. After more than 15 years of uncertainty and heartbreak, there is finally a glimmer of hope for the family of Felicia McGuire. Despite her body never being found, law enforcement officials have reason to believe that her remains are located somewhere in the Boston area. The news of an arrest has brought some measure of closure to a case that had long remained unsolved. While it cannot bring back their beloved Felicia, her family and friends can finally rest assured that someone will be held accountable for her tragic death. Suffolk County District Attorney Kevin R. Hayden expressed his hope that the arrest of 33-year-old David Pena will provide some measure of comfort to Felicia's loved ones. While the pain of losing her can never truly go away, it is hoped that justice will finally be served. Pena is set to appear in court and will likely go to trial very soon. Our hearts go out to Felicia's family and friends during this difficult time. We can only hope that they will find some solace and peace as they continue to heal from this unthinkable tragedy. The case of Felicia McGuire is a heartbreaking story that has lingered for over a decade. However, with the recent arrest of David Pena, there is finally hope for answers and justice for Felicia and her family. The dedication of law enforcement and the support of the community are vital to bringing closure to these kinds of cases. What are your thoughts on this case? Share your opinions in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating true crime stories.
Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled for the next mystery to unfold.